I'm getting dangerously close to looking like a Gumby in this outfit. Good morning! It's brew day and uh, my wife wanted me to make another cream ale. But I'm cream ale up to here. So I, I told her, I said, uh, trust me, I'm going to make you something a little bit different. You're going to love it. This is called a Kentucky Common. Now I got this recipe listening to uh, ExperimentalBrew.com's podcast with uh, Denny Kahn and Drew Beecham. I believe it was Drew who interviewed the owner of a uh, craft brewery in Long Beach, California called 10 Mile Brewing and apparently in California they make a uh, kick-ass Kentucky Common. Uh, during the course of the interview the, uh, the owner dropped clues as to what was in the, uh, their Kentucky Common and I was able to piece together a recipe. What we've got here is nine pounds of six row malt. I've also got two pounds of corn flaked and uh, eight ounces of, uh, this says debittered black malt, but the uh, homebrew store was out of that, so I got black prints. I've got two ounces of Saz hops and I've got one ounce of cluster and I'm using California ale yeast and again, I'm doing the uh, the shaken, not stirred yeast method. So, I'm uh, mashing at 152 degrees and um, do I have any other particulars here that are worth noting? IBUs just under 24, uh, the color is just under 20 SRM, and the uh, ABV should be right around 5.5, 5 5.7% 5 alcohol. So, let's get going. I got a head start on the brew day last night to kind of help speed things up a little bit uh, today. I ran my grains through the mill. They were ready to go. I uh, filled my hot liquor tank up with the required volume of water and um, I made one quart of wort in the kitchen last night for my starter. I'm using the shaken not stirred method uh, of starters. If you haven't heard about that, check out my previous video. So I didn't pitch the yeast last night and put the starter on a stir plate. I just made the, uh, the wort, set it on the counter to cool, took my yeast out of the refrigerator, set it on the counter to uh, warm up overnight. So this morning all I had to do was shake the hell out of that jug, fill it with as much foam as possible. And again, check out the previous video to find out what the hell I'm talking about. It may sound uh, foreign to you. But uh, shook the, the wort, let it foam up, added the yeast, uh, put some foil on top of the, uh, the gallon jug, and I've got that setting in the house, uh, and it's fermenting away. Uh, should be ready later tonight, 8 o'clock tonight to pitch. It takes about 12 hours for the shake and that stirred yeast starter method to, uh, to work. So what I'm doing now is I, I've got the uh, required five-ish gallons of uh, water for my mash in the mash tun. It was a little bit low in temperature, so I'm running it through the Herms coil to bring this up to 164 degrees. That's my strike temperature. Now I said my strike temperature was 164. Beersmith actually calculates 162 and a half. But I've been consistently uh, undershooting my mash temperatures. So I'm going to uh, bump this up a little bit and I'm at 163 and a half. 163.45, 163 and a half. 163.7. I'm tempted to dough in now, just one degree over what Beersmith says. But I've been missing by a couple of degrees. I think it was like three degrees last time. So I'd really like to hit that 164 before I dough in. I'm going to let it recirculate through the herms a little more. Got about a half a degree to go. And then we'll 
We'll dough in. One sixty four point eight. Same here, sixty four point six, one sixty five, but that's right in front of the uh, the outlet of the Herms, one sixty four point eight. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to dough in and shut down my pump, close my valves while I do this. I've got my uh, nine pounds of six row, two pounds of flaked maize already mixed in with the, uh, the grain, and uh, a little bit of black prints. I forget the exact weight. I think it's half a, I think it's eight ounces. That's half a pound, right? All right, not too thin of a mash, right? Uh, let me check my temperature. It should be well stirred in. 152 is my target. I got 154. 154, 153. So maybe, maybe this time I should have believed Beer Smith. Three. So I'm, I'm just a little bit over my target mash temperature this time around. It's the first time I've been over. Um, all right, so the mash is complete, and I'm going to start getting set up for my fly sparge. But before I get going with that, I want to try something. I want to try to reclaim some of the wort in the uh, Herms coil. I realized just how much was left in there uh, as I was cleaning out the last brew. So I'm going to um, go from the hot liquor tank through the pump, through the Herms coil, and into the mash tun until it starts running clear and I've made sure I've got all of that wort out of the coil. I want to reclaim as much of this as possible. Turn that on. Turn that on, turn on my pump. And I just want to leave it on until the, um, until the wort has cleared and the water starts coming out. Okay, now I can start fly sparging. I've got all of the wort out of this Herms coil and we can reconfigure the hoses for my fly sparge. So, I want to go from a hot liquor tank into the pump, out of the pump, into the mash tun, out of the mash tun. Into the boil kettle. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, boom, boom. There we go. Fly sparge all set up, ready to go. And that's a little too fast. All right, I don't know if you can tell just how slow that is coming out.
just like that. And I've got this cracked open just a little bit. Fly sparging takes generally about an hour. So, time to have lunch. All right, I stopped my sparge because I just took a, uh, a gravity reading of the, uh, the final runnings coming out and I got uh, just over five bricks. That's right around 1020. That's a good place to stop. If you let your uh, gravity uh, get too low on your, your, your final runnings here, you, you risk extracting some tannins. So I stopped the sparge. I just drained what was already in the kettle. Uh, I wasn't paying attention because I was setting up the camera and instead of eight and a half plus gallons, I ended up with about nine and a quarter. So I got a little bit more volume in the boil kettle than I intended. Um, the controller is set to boil. And as soon as that begins, I will add my first hop additions, which is uh, two ounces of sauce. All right, I'm starting to get some uh, some boil activity going on here. You don't want to walk away from the pot. There's something called Papazian's Paradox, which states a watched pot never boils, but an unwatched pot always boils over. So true. All right, it's boiling. Let's uh, put in our first hop addition. Two ounces of size. And the reason I'm using two is because these are only 2.8% alpha acid. Um, recipe called for something like five and a half. This works just fine. Love these little Ziploc bags that um, Hopcraft Supply packages their, their hops in because if I only need half an ounce I can, uh, I can just zip it back up. All right, there's our hot addition. Let's start the boil timer. All right, at 15 minutes left in the boil, I hooked up my uh, counterflow chiller, started running work through it to get it sanitized. Also going to add my Whirflock tablets. I'm just kind of crushing them up a little bit. All right. Next step will be uh, at 50, at the 50 mark. 10 minutes left in the boil. I'll add my last addition of hops, and that'll be it until flame out and chilling time. That is the timer, marking uh, 50 minutes into the boil, 10 minutes remaining. And I'm going to add my last ounce of cluster, alpha acid 7.4%. Next stop, flame out, and start chilling. Mash ton cleanup time. Fun, fun, fun. All right, chilling is done. I'm using the last couple of gallons of warm water that was left in the hot liquor tank for cleanup. Got the mash ton all cleaned out. Got a whirlpool going on in the boil kettle. 
got about another five minutes to go on that, then I'll let that settle down and uh, start draining the boil kettle and put it all in the fermenter. Excuse me, but this is making me need to go. I just taken a quick reading here to compare my refractometer with my hydrometer. Hydrometer. And uh, both are reading about 1051 original gravity. It's a little low. 1055 is what uh, my target was. But it is what it is. It's in the uh, fermenter. I'm just going to wait a little while before I pitch the yeast. Uh, but this, uh, this beer is wrapped up and put to bed. Cold beer. My brain hurts. <laughs>